What is the future of Opel in design and in technology? Well, we'll take a glimpse of it here today with the Opel GTX Experimental, or just to say Opel GTX. It's a concept vehicle, a small electric SUV, but you can see with a lot of interesting features on exterior and also on the interior. A lot of surprises for you here today. And we'll take a look at it together on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. Let's go. In the front, we can see a new design philosophy. First of all, this one here is a plexiglass panel and it's hiding everything that is underneath it. So, for example, the Opel logo right in the center and the so-called compass, you can see it right here, or a horizontal line, both lines, and also a vertical one, symmetric proportion, basically splitting and showing on the one hand a you know, very strong design, on the other hand we will also see some fluent lines over onto this, to the side profile. And the headlamps of course all LED and then you can have some joyful animations there for example. And this is also one part of this concept just to bring some more joy. On the one hand a very clean design and on the other hand also some more joy with you know for example playing with those headlamps. In the lower part as it's an electric vehicle this horizontal gap is just for the air intake, the airflow. You don't need a big front grille. That's this new element and it's called visor. This whole glass panel going from left to the right. And yes, it's a concept vehicle and this vehicle as it stands here right now won't be reality one-to-one, -one, but this Opel visor will be one core design element also for new Opel models. That's for sure already. Actually, it's a rather tiny car, just four meters in length or just above 13 foot. It looks even smaller than it actually is. Um, will also be small in the interior, we'll soon find out. The important thing is here, we have first of all this color combination because those ones here are also the typical colors of Opel. Here you can see there's a special feature. It's actually a camera for the rear mirrors because there are no physical rear mirrors. We had this discussion lately also with the Audi e-tron for example. We'll soon take a look at it, how they found a solution to display it on the interior. Then you have those opal colors here with a contrast yellow stripe and it's basically imitating a flying roof line right there. Interesting also with those rims because on the inside they are 17 inch but with those covers here they are basically 20 inch on the outside so they are small also better for the comfort for example but they appear to be bigger and of course also with special tires being needed right there. Then the basic design language here, floating round lights, you can see it's very seamless. There's no aggressive, aggressive parts for example to see and everything is just you know like, like a raindrop for example. And this should be then, as I said earlier, a small Lacro SUV can maybe Im imagine 500 kilometers of range but again this won't be a real car but all of the Opel model range will be electrified in the next years so this gives an outlook of what's to come then for each of the segments individually basically. Also with some crossover style that therefore it's also called Opel GTX. You maybe remember the Opel GT concept which was a sports car. It looks mm, somewhat similar but then again, a little bit higher with the crossover style and the easier entry you might want you know, as a modern customer when you want to go for this very segment. What do you think about the design? And as I said earlier, this car is about interesting details. For example, those little triangles here. This one here has a screen and it could, for example, be the, f uh, the fuel, well, not the fuel status here, the battery capacity status here for the car. And a very interesting detail here, this is also a small screen with the Opel logo and you can see when I spin the wheel, we just used the car jack here that it's possible, so when I spin the wheel, 
the logo stays upright. Not exactly, you know, in that very moment. It, it has, you know, um, it takes some time, but they did it on purpose to be, you know, less perfect, but to be more, you know, how a natural thing would act, basically. So interesting philosophy behind that. And this is a little bit like with the Rolls Royce, you know, with those Rolls Royce rims where the logo stays upright while the wheels are turning. And interesting effect they did here with the screen. We will find this one here, a similar styling element, again in the interior. Well, with this microphone you hardly hear any background noise, but you can hear some here. Um, now it stopped, it was the compressor for the air suspension. Yeah, air suspension here for this small concept, pretty fancy as well, right? But even fancier is the rear, because here you have again this opal compass with a vertical and the, yeah, the vertical line there, horizontal line there. And you can also have this light playing effect. For example, also when you hit the brakes, then there, this will be and the top one will be the additional braking lights. Interesting um, as well to have the logo basically as a braking light. I think that's a very good idea. Yeah, also the GTX name badge, or then in small letters the experimental. And again, this vertical axle going right down there, forming a kind of diffuser. And for such a small car, it has a very big stance on the road if you take this rear perspective. So um, again, joyful elements combined with strong design approaches. So what about the interior? So when you approach the car, you have the key, for example, in your pocket, or maybe you have your mobile phone connected, so then the car is opening itself like magic. And the very interesting thing is, so I'll step out of the picture now, it has this suicide door concept that leaves a lot of space to approach the car. Very interesting and, of course, looks pretty spectacular. There's always a discussion on how practical it really is, but we're going to find out now. Well, if you have this all electric, of course it takes a while to open, but the good thing is you have an easy entry to the vehicle, so that's uh, one of the main advantages. And, well, those seats here, they are pretty futuristic, for sure. And at the same time, everything is basically reduced to the max. So here, for example, beneath me, there's nothing. So the seats are attached to the very middle console and they are freely hanging around. By the way, This is a cover for the seat, by the way, just to protect it. And also in the rear, everything is freely hanging. It's like a floating space. Very interesting. Of course, this is a concept, so it's basically hand-built here in, in Rüsselsheim in Germany at the Opel headquarters. So it's nothing as for the final finish, but you can see a lot of different design elements for example also this inside of the door with a nice fabric cover and there's basically nothing again so everything remains to be clean and simple and I can show you it on the seat as well again so those seats again this is a cover in the lower part just for protection but also with a fabric surface and here again those um, triangles we've also seen on the exterior styling element also with the seat belt those ones here will be speakers that are in the seat that maybe it would be even possible we've seen it with a different concept a couple of years back that different passengers he listen to different kind of music and you will also be able to just put it out and you know maybe carry it on to the picnic area and listen to your music right there so what about you in the cockpit area there it is the first glance and this new field this new area like the visor on the exterior this is a so-called pure panel on the interior basically corresponding to it one panel that goes through from the left to the right where you can see all the relevant information and here on the steering wheel by the way you have the same effect like with the wheels on the exterior this opal logo on the interior on the inside remains in a horizontal way or adapts to that when you turn it. So very interesting and by the way also with the Alcantara cover. So again joyful elements right there but then clean design on the other hand this is the scheme of this concept vehicle. And in the lower part you also have design elements again with those triangle structure and if you look a little bit more above now in this demo mode this is the picture from the, well, the supposed to be picture from the left camera mirror on the exterior so whereas Audi went for the solution to put it at the inside of the doors 
Opel integrated it here now in this front dashboard, so it is basically more in your line of sight. And the same will be corresponding on the right side. So on the very right side, there's an there, there we go. On the right far side, at the co-driver side, there is then the second monitor for the second camera. So this panoramic roof is one of the special okay. things of this vehicle. The only thing I've seen, you know, similar to that was in the Tesla Model X so far. So all the way glass and therefore it's very spacious here, although it's a small car and, you know, you feel air and light all around you. Then again, look at this steering wheel with Alcantara surface. Again, this Opal Compass here, right there, horizontal and vertical split. It's just a funny feature right there. Big speedometer. There will also be a head-up display. I can already see it right now with some GPS arrows right in the in the windscreen right there. Well, and I have to say, this is here this is a bigger display for this rear or side camera. And I think it's better to see than the very small screen we've seen on the Audi e-tron. So um, I'm more of a fan of classic mirrors on the side, but if you do it in that way, I think it's a little bit clearer and safer to use. Then also I can see the GPS view in the middle part, also the range here, for example, 475 kilometers. Well, I wish there was a small SUV with this range for sure. Maybe the Hyundai Kona Electric would be the one that comes closest to it. And on the right side, Again, more infotainment use, for example, at the moment, just very, you know, pure display, just with a, with a clock. You can also see the separation here in the, in the shades here, with a little bit darker on the lower part, a little bit brighter on the upper part, then when you see the black. This could be a very nice GPS um, visualization as well. It's very clear to see that you can get to your destination. Maybe this, this car could also be driving autonomously if we just think about it. And, well, controlling everything. It's not a touchscreen. This one here basically is... Um, whoa. Um, yeah, I just moved the, <laughs> the sides, the, the, the co-driver seat towards Holger, our cameraman for today. But I think he's still alive. <laughs> well, you can control everything with it, even the seat. Um, but of course, it's also supposed to be that you control the top part here, you know, with a with a GPS menu, for example, that you uh, just go up and down. Wow, European Central Bank in Frankfurt here, for example, for the GPS. It also has this um, clicking sound, also basically a haptical feedback. And then you can also use the sides, for example, to switch the whole menu or go back to the GPS mode again. So a uh, very interesting concept. Uh, the you know the advantage is that you can um, use it also while driving. So it's very easy to use also just to click up and down while driving everything. And now I want to show you a very special feature because because here, hey here we are. <laughs> this is another camera inside the vehicle, and this is the selfie function. And uh, so I can take a selfie now. <laughs> smile and well there's not only the selfie because you can see it right here and now it takes a few seconds this is lazy mode. and here we are <laughs> isn't that cute so I now have my own Polaroid picture here selfie with the GTX by the way, you can open the doors right here from the rear. So if I hold that one here, you can see that the doors are opening. This one here is especially for the rear door, but of course for the rear door, the front door has to open a little bit at least. This is one of the disadvantage of suicide doors. So, but interesting concept for sure. And another interesting element, um, have, you, have you just seen it right there? So if you maybe know a 2CV or old uh, Land Rover um, Defender where you could just leave the pure airflow through without any filter, it's possible here as well with an electric function that you can have the small direct airflow. By the way, the car is not really high, but since you have only this glass layer, my head still fits underneath it with 1m86 or 6 foot one pretty interesting as well. In the rear, well, it is a very short car and I need to move the seat here a little bit more in front that I can get in the rear properly. Um, so yeah, it doesn't offer the most plentiful headroom, not really for tall adults, knee room wise, but headroom wise again, 
this does exactly fit because we just have this very thin glass layer. And of course you have a better view even of this whole panoramic area from here, from the rear perspective. And also impressive when we open those, you know, both sides here, left and right, that everything is just, you know, a floating air area as well. If it will be reality, well, I doubt it, doubt it in that way, but a lot of those special features, those joyful features, and also the design elements we've seen, they give us a glimpse of what they want to do with the future cars. And, well, the really next ones that are coming, they have been, you know, the whole process has been running, but, you know, in, let's say, you know, the cars that are coming maybe in two or three years, then this concept will have a major influence on those. Well, there's a little luggage area. There's no trunk on this concept that can be opened at the moment, but you can see you can fit something right there. Um, of course, those head restraints are very voluminous. They take some space away. Also, the battery is placed in here as well in the rear part. And there is also a thought where you can, for example, um, just lower the rear windscreen like this, you know, then the rear hatch opens a little bit to the rear, then the windscreen or the, 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 the glass goes down and then forms some kind of pickup style. This is an idea they have. It could be quite interesting. Um, maybe have this small electric SUV pickup, I don't know. So first now a short conclusion for this concept vehicle, the Opel GTX. Well, you have on the one hand a very clean design on the exterior, then with a lot of joyful elements and this combination I think is very interesting. Of course it looks a little bit like a toy car but this is also showing that they are a little bit more daring with the design now. Opel now on the ownership of the PSA group they hope that they and it seems to be you know that like in, in the you know in the first month now and in the um, you know in the process now they are already profitable again now finally so it seems to be that Opel has a little bit more room to play around on the one hand, on the other hand, of course, you're a little bit limited because they will use the very same platforms than the PSA group. Of course, technology-wise, usually the brands profit from that as well because you can invest more in technology together and then all of the single individual cars profit from that. So, from design, again, very interesting elements we found here. Also with you know some ideas we haven't seen so far with any other concept vehicles. And, as I said earlier, it is a concept vehicle the electric small SUV is of course a great idea and I think this will be a market in the future. But especially with this visor in the front and the pure panel on the interior, this will be part of real Opel cars. Not maybe in the next year, maybe not in two years, but then the cars that come after that, those will carry also those elements we can see here. Not all of them, but some of them. And I think it's also part that you react to those different styling elements and also to the joyful ideas. And if they see they get good feedback, then maybe one of those elements have also a chance to be implemented in a real vehicle. But this one here is not only about this concept car today. We also took a tour with Opel over the past month to see how this car actually came to place, how everything evolved with the different ideas and the whole concept. And we want to show you this exclusive tour behind the scenes right now. And as promised, we also have a special feature for you guys. Because over the past month, we have been visiting the design center in Rüsselsheim at the Opel headquarters. And it was a very interesting journey we would like to share with you here now as well. So, at one event, for example, we could do this, what you can see here. It was a very amazing experience because I was actually able to design my own Opel and I picked actually a crossover because SUVs are going to be sold in high numbers in the next years and I called it Opel Thunder and you can see it has a very strong front but it actually also has a lot of room on the inside that was also very important to me that it was not only good looking and like a super fancy concept but that is also has some usability that you can actually do something with the car. And also referring to some of the past Opel models which had a more, you know, a stronger accentuation, especially on the front grille. 
rather clean design and that's also what Opel wants to do focus again on this rather clean and stronger German design which they also have been doing in the past yeah and I had a designer a professional Opel designer alongside me and he actually helped them with the sketching of course I couldn't have done that myself because it's really complicated to use all the software there but it looks so easy uh, when you see them do their work And later it was time to take a look at the real sketch so yeah my sketch came close as it was a crossover or SUV but it was a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger in the design accentuations and Mark Adams actually picked for this B SUV a rather round approach so uh, very sleek lines sensual lines also clean german design but not as strong as i would have imagined it and you can see how this design was actually done also with this new so-called visor in the front the opal visor the black front grille for the all-electric vehicle which does not have any openings for the air intakes for example and it's really amazing how they actually style with light and shadow and then change the sketch that it really appears real um, actually pretty soon so that was also a very interesting experience and uh, it, again it looks so easy and then you can take a look here how the final work actually looked like or different sketches from different designers and then the, the best one is being picked also this was a very interesting idea with the new tire concept where the inside wheel is just 17 inch but the outside wheel size is 20 inch so the rim looks bigger but more tire is being used very interesting and also when you go from the pure let's say 2d sketch then to a 3d model with this kind of skeleton below that then there's another program which makes then even surfaces everything appears real and becomes a true 3d model which a designer then can take for example to the ceos and present their 3d models already for example then with interior parts and they can open the doors then even that's of course pretty amazing also some interior sketches because it's not only about the exterior it's mainly also about the interior and the work uh, that follows after that so very interesting how fancy and futuristic the sketches look then in the, in the, in the first steps but then you can also transport to the 3d models here for example also the evolution of the steering wheels then you can 3d print it and really can hold it in your hand and see what it's like and this really speeds up the process, same as <laughs> for this uh, virtual reality experience. Get the glasses, special glasses, and have a 3D experience of the interior. Can check other dimensions actually proper. You can somehow in your mind feel the steering wheel, and then check if maybe something from proportions need to be changed. So, you know, that's about the modern processes, but what about the past influences? With Mark Adams, head of Opel Design, we're going to talk about the design heritage and how actually were the influences from the past vehicles that you carried over to the new vehicles. Well, I think both of these vehicles that we're standing next to here, both the Experimental uh, GT, which was the very first concept car ever done in Europe, and the CD concept here really have the core DNA of what Opel was all about. And that, for us, when we look back at these cars, we see this purity of design. We keep using this word purity or pure design, this simple execution, but done in a characterful way. Can you show us? Which exactly yeah, mean? I mean, if you look at some of the, the clean surfaces on both of these cars, they have very simple sculptural shapes, but they're very structured. So they're done in a very strong, 
strong way. There's a framework underneath both of these cars, but there's a simplicity to the surfacing that gives it this purity of design. But at the same time, they've got bold graphics and proportions that really make them stand out. And this was something that, that really resonated with us when we look back at these cars and we started picking on those two words of bold and pure and thinking that really was the essence of the DNA when the guys were designing these cars back in the 60s. So how can we take that DNA, how can we take that principle of design, bring it into the modern era, take it forward so you take that DNA and project it into the modern world. So the GT concept that we showed in 2016 was our real starting point for exploring that and then creating this very modern but at the same time you can see a big connection back to these cars these very clean bold surfaces bold graphic executions minimum cut lines this less is more but done in a very creative way and that is the essence of what we're going to take forward it's a delicate balance because you don't want less is more to become boring we want it to always be seen as progressive and bold and moving forward really looking into the future and we're confident that we can take those principles and project those onto every new Opal going forward and you'll obviously see that in the in the next few years so do you think it's actually possible to get this you know more pure actually also a muscular sporty approach not only for sporty cars but also for you know an ordinary family SUV for example or maybe you know, a family van, is that actually possible? Yeah, it, it is, and <laughs> you've actually triggered on, on some things that we are going to be sharing very soon, is that I was asked many times when we uh, unveiled the GT, is, yeah, this is a cool sports car, but how does that relate to the rest of your portfolio? Obviously, I have the knowledge that that is very transferable to any type of product, and what we have been working very hard on in the last couple of years I would say is really developing how can you transfer that principle from small cars, large cars, SUVs, whatever it may be to expand that across the whole portfolio and we have been we have developed that Obviously, I can't share that with you at this moment in time, but you'll see that starting to appear and grow as our uh, new face of our portfolio comes through in the, in the next few years. Thank you very much for the insight, and of course, we will show that with you as soon as we can.